Hey there friends, Nibs again. Um, <clears throat> wanted to throw together a quick little video for you guys. Uh, show you kind of the adventures I'm getting myself into uh, this afternoon. Um, <clears throat> yesterday I did a video uh, comparing my uh, my Daisy Model 188 uh, to my Healthway Plainsman uh, as far as accuracy goes. But I did test them both across the chronograph chronograph and uh after i did the video i did a little bit of research and uh everything i found online suggested that this uh daisy 188 should be doing a little bit more a little bit more feet per second than uh, what i was seeing i was averaging about 160 feet per second with it um all the uh other tests that i've seen people do online showed it doing closer to like 250 average so um <clears throat> i did want to uh so we'll, i'll bring you down to the desktop here now tabletop bench top whatever you want to call it um i've already got it all taken apart um but uh i w just wanted to inspect everything inside make sure there wasn't anything broken um or the seal wasn't completely crudded up or something clogged or something like that so so far um other than just having kind of some dirty real thin oil inside of here uh i really don't see too much uh going wrong but uh i'm going to uh just clean everything up with some some brake parts cleaner and get it nice and clean and uh, I'm going to be real careful with this piece because it looks like it could be pretty fragile here this is the back of the <clears throat> back of the compression piston um, <clears throat> and uh, this little piece seals between the barrel and the compression piston so I don't want to crack that little piece off of there uh, I think that would be a bad plan <laughs> you want to get down in between there and get some some of that gunk out of there though I got this little passage right here that the air has to go through it looks like it's got some crud in there So I already did uh, wrap a piece of uh, old t-shirt around my cleaning rod and uh, clean out the inside of the chamber, the tube here, really well. Um, I'll pull this barrel out and see what that, make sure that's not too dirty. Try to keep, keep in mind I got you guys on camera here. A lot of times I like to bring the pieces up closer to me um, this is a really pretty cool cool design pretty ingenious design though um, so let's see here this piece goes back on here like this I wonder if I should put a little bit of, just a little bit of grease around that uh, just to seal the back of that I've got some of this Super Lube synthetic grease here. Pretty good stuff. Just put the tiniest little bit around that outside edge just to help seal between those two parts. Keep air from being able to leak past that. So that goes on there like that, and then so the last thing I want to do is, so this is the the actual plunger, and then this is the cocking lever here. Um, <clears throat> let me do a little bit of research and see if I can find me one of these. It, 
It doesn't really seem to be in terrible shape, but uh, I think it should be a little more flexible than it is, and it's probably just, you know, getting old and dried out. But for now, we'll, we'll clean her up and put some fresh Pell oil on there and So that old, that old oil that was on there did feel kind of, kind of gritty and, but I think this gun's going to need a new seal to, to really <clears throat> get any kind of better performance out of it. Give me one second. I want to go grab my Pell oil. It was already right here. All right. So, let's see here. <laughs> Get a good amount of oil around this. Uh, just so it doesn't do any more damage while it's sliding in there. Yeah, I think this thing's gonna need a need to find find a new seal for this guy, but for now, hopefully we'll gain a few more feet per second out of it. back down in here so one thing you got to do is get that little black o-ring Should be able to pull this back and have my sear engage right there. So that's working good. Um, what I can do is I can manually disengage that so I don't fire it without having it. Uh, Alrighty, so now I just got to get it all put back together. We'll see if it uh, that helped at all. So this is, uh, I'll keep you guys on camera, but if it ends up taking too long, I may cut some of this out. But uh, everything seems to be seated back down in where it belongs. So this little piece goes out here on the back. That's the... Uh, Little piece that lets the babies come in. Hmm. Why is that? them into the rescue okay now 
now it's up in where it belongs. Let me get this back in place here. There we go. Now it should be okay. Just wondering why that wasn't going back together right there, but okay. So now let me try here again. Make sure everything. Yeah, okay, everything's moving like it's supposed to. <clears throat> so there's a little spring right here that goes up here in the front that actually kind of goes between the two halves when they go together. So this is the one that I took apart a week or two ago to fix this. This little spring mount was not in the right place. So I don't know if you recall that. But and then the last piece here that's a real bugger to get back in is this... Uh, little safety spring and detent here uh, gotta be real careful with that guy it will go flying okay that looks pretty good So it's firing, that's good. So let's get all our screws put back in here before something goes flying. So there's three uh, longer screws that are equal length that go in the body, main body here. So one trick I learned a long time ago when you're dealing with, uh, mostly with plastics, but also this pot metal type of material, you turn your screwdriver backwards until it clicks down that way your screw, these are self-tapping screws, um, that would dig down into that metal new and you run a risk of uh, either stripping out those threads or uh, maybe cracking the casting there. So, But you can kind of feel when you're backing up it just drops off the edge of the uh, thread that's already cut in there. And uh, now you know you're in that, there you go, now you know you're in that same thread and you're not going to run the risk of cutting a new one. Because if you do that too many times, even if it doesn't strip it out that time, uh, eventually you're going to strip out that hole and, uh, and your nice vintage piece is going to be a piece of junk. So, <clears throat> there. all back together, let me bring you up here. <clears throat> all right um so now what i'm gonna do i'm gonna pause this for a minute and uh i'll put some bb's in this and get the chronograph uh fired up and uh we'll try a couple shots across the chronograph and see what we get so give me a minute Alrighty, friends so i'm back here um got the crony set up here um unfortunately uh like i said in a couple other videos um I need my phone to, sorry about the light in the back there, I need my phone to uh, hook up to the to the Caldwell here and uh, run the app so I would be able to show you what we're running for feet per second, but uh, my other phone that I have, uh, it's an older iPhone 7 and the battery goes from like 97% down to zero in just a couple of minutes, so... Um, I had been using that before as a second phone. I do have a new battery on order. I'm going to try to replace that. I may end up breaking it. Who knows? But uh, um, I have a battery for that on order. Um, so right now I'm down to one camera until I get that fixed. So I can't hook up to the Caldwell here and film and uh, record uh, feet per second here. So so let's see what we got anyway. So you, you cock it. Uh, again, you pull that down, cock it. And then does have this loading port here. I'm going to play around with that a little bit here today too. Um, see if I can figure out why 
Uh, maybe it just doesn't have, maybe it's just the problem of the lack of feet per second that uh, it wouldn't shoot pellets uh, properly or reliably, but let's see here. So that one was 194. Let me see. I think I got a couple more in here. That one was 205. Let me grab a couple more. Just do try a couple more. So as you can see, uh, what I was averaging the other day was about 160. So 211. So it's already a, a pretty significant uh, 208. That was it. Um, let me pause it just for a minute. I'm going to grab a, a pack of pellets and see if we can get some readings on some pellets here. Alrighty, I'm back. Just uh, first, uh, first little bin that was on top of the pile was uh, these RWS Hobbies, which are some nice light ones so uh, this thing is kind of fidgety to get these pellets to go in there proper maybe that you got a lot of so this is an older one the uh, the loading port does have a, a wide enough area to put a pellet in even though they're seeming to be pretty tough to get to go in there um, but the uh, they came out subsequently down the road <sighs> hard to do enough with without a handful of pellets there we go so um, the the older ones would take pellets and BBs I read and then the newer ones uh, they narrowed that gap down in there so that uh, it was just kind of a, a window where you could see that there would that did not even come out of the gun all right well still think i need a new seal in this one but uh, at least for bb's Gained about 40, averaging about 45 feet per second. That's pretty significant from 160 up to 205. Um, but anyway, uh, let me bring you up here for a minute. So, uh, anyway, so I uh, tore that down, cleaned her up, put some fresh oil in there, and gained about 45 feet per second. That's pretty significant. Um, I'm still not sure why the pellets won't work in there, but uh, that's a story for another another session, I guess. But hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, like, share, and subscribe, and uh, we'll see you again soon. Have a great day.